Miss Jody Ritson. Let's hear it. Hi, everybody. If we didn't get to meet yesterday, I'm Jody. The other half of me is looking for something right now. Phyllis, welcome to the best monkeys convention that we have had thus far. What do you think about having all the kids here? Pretty cool, right? we want to do and get out of the way would be the most exciting thing for us, which is for myself to introduce Mr. Terry Hazlitt. He is the, the, um, the executive director, I didn't want to shortchange him, the executive director of America's Pop Music Hall of Fame. And because of all of you, he is here and he's got a little bit of a speech that he would like to uh, share with you. So let's hear it for Terry. This is going to be like preaching to the choir, and I know that, but we want to make it a formal induction, so we're going to give you the information anyway. 48 years ago, Columbia Pictures had the seemingly high concept of swiping an idea from a big screen and adapting it to a small screen. The big screen success was a hard day's night. The resulting small screen series was The Monkees. There, there was no existing band to star in the Monkees in the series, and the producers reportedly considering everyone from Stephen Stills to John Sebastian and Danny Hutton of Three Dog Night, although it's pretty hard to imagine them singing Tapioca Tundra. <laughs> Following hundreds of editions, the producers finally settled on Mickey Dolenz, Davy Jones, Michael Nesmith, and Peter Tork. The TV series, The Monkees, was a huge success. It even won two Emmy Awards. The Monkees band, however, was an out-and-out -out smash. Let's count the waves. In 1966 and 1967, The Monkees had four number one albums in a 12-month span. In 1966 and 1967, the album The Monkees stayed in the number one position longer than any album released up until that time. In 1967, The Monkees had the number one and number three songs of the entire year with I'm a Believer and Daydream Believer. In 1967, More of the Monkees was the best selling album of the year. It stayed on the chart for 70 weeks becoming the 12th best-selling album of all time. And in 1967, the Monkees outsold the Beatles and the Rolling Stones. In 1986 and 1987, the Monkees had not five, not six, but seven albums on the chart simultaneously. In 2006, Headquarters was included in the 1,001 albums you have to hear before you die. And 48 years after the Monkees recorded their first hit, Mickey Dolenz, Michael Nesmith, and Peter Cor continue to have extremely successful careers. To put it succinctly, the Monkees, individually and collectively, have never been nor ever will be anyone's stepping stone. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's, there's one fact we left out. The Monkees also introduced the Jimi Hendrix experience to American audiences on one of their tours. bizarre, it shouldn't. The monkeys defy categorizing, even though some tried to do just that. Some take the monkeys as bubblegum, as in last train to Clarksville. But of course, if you were here last night, you know it rocked out pretty well. Some said they were easy listening, as in Daydream Believer. Some said they were rock, as in I'm Not Your Stepping Stone. And some said they were psychedelic rock, as in Tapioca Tundra. If you listen to their albums, 
as millions did, you could also find flashes of country, blues, blue-eyed soul, and folk music. The truth is that these were four versatile singers and performers who for more than six decades have given worldwide audiences a wealth of music, entertainment, and memories. One wonders why the Hall of Fames haven't come calling. We're here to tell you they have. The decades of fans being daydream believers about the monkeys becoming Hall of Famers is over. In the, first, in the first two years of public voting for America's Pop Music Hall of Fame, the monkeys received more votes than Frank Sinatra, more, more votes than any Motown act, more votes than the Beach Boys, more votes than Elvis Presley, more votes than the Beatles. More votes, in fact, than any other nominee ever for America's Pop Music Hall of Fame. On this 15th day of March 2014, we are honored, proud, and extremely thrilled to present Mickey Dolenz, Davy Jones, Mike Nesmith, and Peter Tork is both collectively and individual inductees into America's Pop Music Hall of Fame. And now the moment you've been waiting for. Since I'm 12 years old, I have waited for this moment. I would like to introduce Mike, Mickey, and Peter, the Monkees. into America's Pop Music Hall of Fame. Mine says Peter Noon. <laughs> what happened? Mine says Mickey Nesmith. <laughs> we also want you to know we do have one for Davy Jones and we'll be sending it to his family. Yes. Thank you so much for this honor. It's a pleasure to be here. You guys having a good time? Yeah! A great convention. A big thank you to Jody and Phyllis for putting on a really great convention and also for setting up this, this wonderful honor. Thank you. Everybody hold them up and ready for a photo. A photo start over there and sweet. Okay? <laughs> to stage right, <laughs> all the way to the extreme. There's an extreme person right now, just as we're talking about. Thank you all very much. Thank you. David. 
Stephen Alexander, what are you doing with that microphone? Uh, tell him. <laughs> okay, you can have mine too. No, uh, you know what, guys, I think actually we should. Hey, let's do the show right here. <laughs> It's a Judy Garland, Mickey Rooney reference, you guys wouldn't know. Why don't we do a tour? Yeah! Why don't, why don't we do a tour, wait, wait, like wait, in wait, the wait. middle of May? Wait, 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 wait. Wait, a tour? What? A tour? Well, yeah, I got a guitar and drums and you, you got a microphone. <laughs> yeah, I got a mic and a, and a bass. There's I some lights, bass. we got some lights. Got some lights, hey. We could do the show. Right. right here. Right here. We can start at the casino in New Hampshire. Where? The casino uh, venue in New Hampshire. There's this, you know, New Hampshire has a coastline of about 30 yards yeah. away, you know? And there's you a mean we right could there. start the tour around the middle of May in New Hampshire? I think we could, yeah. The casino? Yeah, I think we could. Yeah. And then move on to Jersey. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and Philly and... and uh, uh, and then what else? Um, Zanzibar. Zanzibar, yeah. Mozambique. Um, Dubuque. Uh, Milwaukee. And we could do the tour for like three or four weeks three all weeks. over the Midwest and the East yeah. Coast. Yeah. We could all come. You think that'd be a good idea? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. We'll be this, is, this is the official announcement, ladies and gentlemen. We are touring. Sorry. See you guys. See you guys there on the road. If you are in the New Jersey area, the monkeys are going to be in the area May twenty May twenty fourth, and the Diane in the front row over in the vendor room has the information about getting tickets. And we're also so you know we're going to be doing raffles later, and part of the raffles will be.